Good evening, folks. What's going on? It is the Earth Master here on this uh, wonderful Saturday night. Cold and rainy, by the way, here in California, March 11, 2023. It's about uh, 10.09 p.m. here along the West Coast in California, of course. And the latest earthquake shows a 1.1 up into the Alaska area. Uh, also looks like a 1.2 coming into the area of the um, Tanaga Volcano area. So let's go ahead and check out the movement here across the USGS map here over the last 24 hours. A lot of activity ramping up here across the Western Pacific and adjacent plates. Uh, we'll get to that here in just a second, but uh, earthquake activity up here around these volcanoes along the Aleutian Trench continues with uh, roughly about the equal amount of earthquakes as we've seen over the past couple days. 152 earthquakes in the last 24 hours. It's probably gonna push us close to a thousand here over the last week, 948 earthquakes, uh, mainly around the Tanaga and the uh, the uh, Takawanga volcano. Still kind of watching it. Um, again, a lot of earthquake activity and uh, the depth of the, these earthquakes all over the place. They're jumping up and down from uh, very shallow earthquake activity down to about uh, seven kilometers or so. The latest informational statement here put out by the Alaskan Volcano Observatory uh, it was put out earlier this morning, it looks like. Uh, no eruption visible yet. Um, and things are roughly about the same as they have been over the past couple days. No increasing in activity and no declining in activity. There is no, um, no signs of an eruption. But uh, they mention right here additional shallow seismicity and possible other signs of unrest, such as gas emissions, elevated surface temperatures, and surface deformation to precede any future eruption if one were to occur. So no eruption yet. Still keep an eye on it, though. We're still looking at a pretty good earthquake swarm kicking up there along the Aleutian Trench. Uh, another notification put out here for uh, the Kilauea volcano on the Big Island. Kilauea is uh, not erupting. Looks like there was uh, geophysical signals recorded by the uh, folks there on the island that a magmatic intrusion occurred beneath the summit Looks like earlier this morning, um, seismicity has returned to background levels. Ground deformation has stabilized and no lava has been observed at the surface. Uh, it's possible that this thing could pop back up here and resume eruptive activity. But right now, it um, doesn't look like things are uh, um, erupting there at Kilauea anymore. So we'll continue to watch that and uh, see how it plays out. All right, uh, earthquake activity across the region here. Notice quite a bit here across the Western Pacific and the Western uh, area here of the Philippine Plate. Uh, we're gonna start down here into the Fiji area and the Tonga Trench. Earlier this evening, goodness, we had a super deep earthquake, 617 kilometers deep. Well, we do get them on occasionally and sometimes we get uh, deeper ones than these, but uh, it's been a while since I've seen a 600 uh, kilometer deep earthquake, close to it, but that's uh, way down there. 4.3 prior to that, uh, looks like a little bit of surface quaking going on here around the Vanuatu area. A little bit of deeper movement as well here into the, um, you know, just north of Port Villa. There's a, uh, some, a couple different trenches here that run across the area. This whole region showing quite a bit of uptick here recently over the last couple days down in New Zealand as well uh, and I just don't know why the USGS ain't covering it and it looks like the EMSC is reporting some of that earthquake activity in the North Island with a couple threes but uh, let's go ahead and check out the GeoNet servers here um, just to see what's going on here because New Zealand's a pretty important area to monitor 3.2 about five hours ago uh, there's that pair of fours from um, well, it says yesterday on here. Let me go back here to the uh, all magnitudes and see exactly what we have. Some twos. There's a 3.8 just about an hour ago. 259 kilometers deep. That's going to be associated with the uh, Hikurangi subduction zone for that area. Uh, looks like there was another 4.2 up along the Kermadec Trench two hours ago. A couple ones, some more threes it looks like. Uh, outside the Wellington area. And the fours here, they were, uh, I'm trying to think if it's been over, there's another 4.2 along the Kermadec Trench. 
Where were those 4.4s at? I know it's been a little while. I don't know if it's been 24 hours, though, or not uh, since we've seen those earthquakes. But either way, possibly. I'm guessing that's where it was. But um, either way, that was uh, a little bit of uh, earthquake activity last night here, early this morning, up around the, uh, the Cook Inlet area. Hold on a second here. We had a four point, a yeah, uh, Cook Strait, excuse me. I was saying the Cook Inlet, that's another area on my mind. But we did see some activity kind of ramp up here across the plate boundary with those double fours kicking off last night and quite a few other earthquakes showing up there um, across the map here for New Zealand. Looks fairly active across this area today. So continue to watch it and monitor it uh, for some further activity. I expect it uh, to pick up considering all the deeper movement activity up north here. Uh, it only makes sense, so continue to watch that New Zealand area and the Kermadec Trench here for uh, some soon-to-be activity across areas of Manila and the Philippines. A couple fours out there, quite a few fours listed up here on the map. Some deep, some shallow. Um, latest one looks to be a 4.4 into the uh, Indonesia region, Papua New Guinea area, 12 kilometers deep. Uh, no major movement up north here along the Kuro Kamchaka Trench. We got these two earthquakes here uh, from early this morning and this afternoon. Both of those fairly deep, minimal surface adjustment up here. So this is building. It is definitely building, folks. We'll continue to watch that area. Uh, not a whole lot across the Java Trench, but let me check here and see what we got. Looks fairly quiet. Even on the EMSC model here, there's not a whole lot going on there. Not even some smaller quakes, so... Uh, that's awfully quiet. Around the Mediterranean, quite a few twos kicking off here over the last 24 hours. And of course, earthquake activity there at the Turkey region continuing. Did see a little bit of uptick here into the South Sandwich Trench area with a, a couple earthquakes. So let's go down there and see what's going on here. A little swarm of activity. Looks like 5.2 and a couple upper fours here within a, literally within a couple hours of each other. These are all relatively shallow, 10 kilometers deep. It is in that area that uh, did see the eight-pointer back in 2000, uh, 2021. Uh, but over the past couple months here, this has been pretty quiet. So this type of movement upstream, very shallow, um, and within literally within a couple hours of each other, could be pointing uh, towards some larger scale movement here. Uh, further up north into the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, we did see this earthquake early this morning near the Ascension Fracture Zone 4.8 and the uh, Divergent Boundary out there. South America region, a couple earthquakes showing up here on the map. Doesn't look like anything spectacular here, according to the USGS. Uh, also the EMSC, just showing some twos and threes out here. Some of it relatively deep there into the Peru-Chile Trench. Uh, some minor earthquake activity across Puerto Rico and... Uh, a couple fours there, fours there along the Middle America Trench off the coast of Guatemala. Got uh, a couple small earthquakes there. Looks like, uh, yeah, looks like we're getting a little bit of deeper activity here across this subduction zone. All right, into the states. Not a whole lot going on for the rest of the country as far as the mid and the eastern portion of the country. All pretty quiet. Uh, Idaho did see... Uh, an earthquake earlier this evening, a 3.9, 14 kilometers deep, just off of the Long Valley Fault. Not associated with Long Valley Super Volcano, but up there in Idaho. Uh, looks like a little bit of movement kicking off there. 14 kilometers deep, pretty deep. Uh, Northern California, a little spotty activity here. We did have some uh, deeper movement quakes into the southern end of the Cascadia with that 2.5 underneath this area at 20 6.6 .6 kilometers deep. So let me check out the uh, the trimmer map here tonight and see what's going on with the trimmer. There we go. 142 epicenters of trimmer down here at the southern end of the Cascadia. Uh, that could be contributing to a little bit of pressure built up down in Northern California with that earthquake activity uh, that we're seeing here across the region today. Nothing major going on. Uh, still still actually fairly quiet if you really think about uh, the amount of earthquake activity that we've seen here across the past week or so it really hasn't been all that impressive very quiet 
So I'm um, not for sure what's going on. I'm sure it's just a matter of time before we see some activity. The question is where? A little bit of swarming act um, just off the shore of the Newport Beach area down in SoCal, south of Long Beach. A couple ones and even a two, 12 kilometers deep for roughly all of those. That sits off of the Thumbs Huntington Beach Fault. Oh, goodness, never heard of it. Uh, Huntington Beach. A couple different fracture zones out here, but uh, I'm assuming that may be a thrust fault with that uh, with those depths there of the earthquakes. <clears throat> All right, see if I can get through this. I'm still a little sick, folks, but I'm getting better. 1.6 just off the San Andreas Fault as well. 14 kilometers deep for that quake. Overall, though, Southern California and the region of the West Coast is just a little on the quiet side, if you ask me. I know there's always earthquake activity out there, but we really haven't seen too much here lately. A little concerning. 2.1 into the uh, northeastern flank here. Uh, Mauna Loa, continue to watch that. Kilauea Volcano still showing a little bit of activity here. Um, it's hard to say what's going on if there's magmatic intrusions, uh, but not breaking through the surface area. It could mean that they're, uh, you know, it's getting, it's going to fill up a little bit and recharge and then possibly see the uh, continual eruption out here around Lava Lake. But uh, for now, just some earthquake activity out there, relatively shallow between one and uh, two kilometers deep. This earthquake here around Mauna Loa, it's just a single earthquake, but it's 4.6 kilometers deep. We'll watch this and see if it breaks out in any type of swarming. That could indicate uh, magma uh, shooting towards the surface out there. All right, uh, let's see here. I think that's about it for that. Uh, let's go ahead and move on here to the space weather activity here from solarham.net is the site. Not a whole lot. Um, fairly level across the board here. We haven't really seen any sufficient C flares. Definitely no M or X flares. Uh, current threat looks like a 95% chance for a C flare. M flare at 15 and an X flare at 1%. Uh, let's Take a look at these sunspots and see if they harbor anything worth noting. Doesn't look like it, folks. Um, yeah, there are massive sunspots out here, but they look pretty stable. I don't see a whole lot of intermixing of the colors of magnetic structure here within the sunspots. So, you know, that would tell me that they're getting ready to spark, so to speak. But these all look relatively stable. Um... Yeah, I can't even really pick one to maybe even keep an eye on. It looks rel relatively quiet, folks, with not a whole lot of further development here around the eastern limb. So we'll watch these kind of just float along with quiet solar weather activity. There we go. Click the solar ham and um, just see how it plays out. There's a little miniature coronal hole, number, what is that, 84, positioned right at Earth. But I guarantee you this is not going to be anything to adjust here in the in the uh, three day just going to be very minimal uh, so therefore the auroras minimal at best not a whole lot of potential up there across the higher latitudes unfortunately i know a lot of people like that stuff and i would love to see it as well just got to time it right uh, in order to be up there i was up there a couple years ago and it was just cloudy drizzly and of course i went up there in the middle of winter it was pretty cool actually i like uh, kind of like the darkness all right, uh, what do we have here for weather activity? Well, we got a bunch of rain coming in here to the west coast again. We actually had a couple tornado warnings down there in uh, central California and also um, outside of Fresno down there in the San Joaquin Valley area as well. Um, and further south within that region, pretty active weather. But our next weather maker is kind of knocking on the door right there for tomorrow, tonight and tomorrow. Not a big system, but uh, it's going to be off and on rain showers here for Northern Cal before a little bit more potent system comes in, um, bringing in with it uh, fairly decent precipitation amounts. The brunt of it looks like it's going to be south of the Bay Area and into portions of Southern California. Look at that around Los Angeles, stretching down to San Diego. You guys are going to get soaked. Uh, and I know there's a lot of snow up there in the mountains, but this is going to be a warmer storm, so keep your eyes and ears open for flooding concerns down there in Southern Cal. Uh, let's see, after that, a uh, little break or two, a couple days maybe, before another system rolls on in. And uh, another system, and I think another system. 
And see how this kind of switched up from uh, from last night here. It kind of showed these storm systems really not hitting California, but they uh, it altered and changed a little bit. Looks like there may be a, another uh, low pressure system here trying to scoot in. But this far out, it's very, um, I don't know, the accuracy is not 100%. Basically, only well, next couple days, few days or so, comes out to be fairly accurate. But anything beyond that is just kind of a general um, pattern that the computer models are picking up in terms of the forecast. But they're all subject to change. But it looks like the storm door should remain open here uh, for the California area. And total accumulated precipitation mounts out here will no doubt be impressive for uh, a good portion of the state. This does go out to about the 26th, all subject to change again. But down here around Los Angeles area and whatnot, looking at maybe, goodness, four to five inches of rainfall. Can you guys handle it down there in SoCal? I'm sure you can. Uh, up here in Northern California, probably between another, it looks like three and five inches or so. Uh, so we could kind of keep an eye on this, see how it plays out. Either way, storm door is open. And that is a good thing for us here in California. No doubt we'll definitely be out of the drought. And uh, hopefully hopefully, um, our following winters here will remain wet. All right. Uh, I think that's about it, guys. Um, you know, keep an, uh, keep an eye on a couple of different spots out here. Java Trench here, awfully quiet. Um, you know, a little bit of uptick in movement here across North Island with those fours and some threes and obviously some other smaller quakes there across that major plate boundary uh, but the major adjustment up north here should affect the quantity of earthquakes here across new zealand and the kermadec trench very soon and uh, I, I don't really know what to say about the west coast it's just it's just there um but with all this rainfall keep an eye on these fault systems folks i, I keep saying that but it takes a little while for the rain to soak on down um, into these, um, you know, potentially hazardous fault zones. Uh, it's not just a major plate boundary, the San Andreas Fault. There's other fault systems out here that uh, need to be monitored when it comes to the um, potential out there of, of deadly earthquakes. Alrighty, I think that's about it, folks. Have a good night. Uh, voice managed to uh, stay somewhat throughout the entire update. Uh, I don't know what I have. It's just kind of a weird, slight fever, raspiness in my throat. Kind of a little sore throat, but nothing major. And But just an overall feeling of, uh, I'm trying to think of the word for it, blah. I guess I could use the word blah out here, right? I guess that's kind of what it feels like here. And it's been like that for about three days or so now. Getting better, but uh, not quite my 100% self here. Um, so... Hopefully that changes here really soon. Have a good night, folks. Stay safe. We will catch you guys back out here tomorrow. Don't forget, uh, I don't know if all the states uh, spring forward or not, but yeah. Okay, Turn the clock ahead one hour. Of course, I don't really have any clocks that require that. Maybe my weather station here, but that's about it. Everything else, cell phone, computers, and all that good stuff just automatically uh, adjust to the uh, daylight savings time there tonight. So we lose an hour of sleep already. Catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Have yourself a fabulous night, everyone. Catch you guys later.